Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going through a full individual speed session. So I'm trying to improve my speed. Preseason is going to be about six weeks from now. So I'm looking just to increase my acceleration, my speed a little bit. So I'm going to be wearing my player just to track the data so I can keep track of my progress over the next few weeks as I'm doing these kind of sessions, see how much improvement I'm making. It's going to be mainly without the ball today. A lot of the drills, probably 75% of the session is going to be without the ball. And then we're going to involve a drill at the end that does use the ball. So this is the session. I'll put it on the screen for you guys if you want to follow along. If any of this doesn't make sense, I'm going to go through each exercise, each rep, so that you know exactly what you need to do. We're going to start with a warm up and activation using the resistance band. Then we're going to go through some plyo work. So just getting those muscles really activated, nice and explosive. A lot of these are taken from my Rapido training program, but we're just going to do one round of them. Instead of making it a full workout on plyometrics, we're just going to use them as part of the warm up just to get everything fired up. Then we're going to go into a variety of sprint work. So we're going to be using these cones here, these gates. Going to be varying the distances, going to be varying the type of start I have. So sometimes I'll be starting facing forwards, sometimes I'll be starting with a lateral bound or something. Because this is more football specific, you're not always starting your accelerations from a forwards position. Sometimes you're going to be going in one direction, have to change direction and sprint in the opposite way. Sometimes you're going to be backwards, having to turn and go. So I'm going to try and replicate all of that in today's session. And then we're going to cool down and recover at the end. So it's going to be a tough session today. It's quite hot as well. So I'm expecting to get a sweat on, which should be really good. Let's get into the warm up. Some people were asking what resistance I use for my bands. The red one here I'm using is heavy. Sometimes I'll use the black one, which is extra heavy, but we're gonna get a good activation in these plyo exercises so I can take it down a notch on the resistance band today. But usually I'll go heavy just so I'm really activated for my sessions. But let's get into the plyo. So for each of these exercises, I'm gonna be doing 10 reps. Sometimes it's gonna be a single leg activity. So I'm gonna focus on one side at a time. But a lot of these are to really activate the glutes, activate the hip flexors, all those muscles that you use when you're sprinting. You wanna make sure they're fired up. A, it's gonna improve your performance, you're gonna be more explosive, and also it's gonna help you avoid injury because if you don't activate all those areas, another part of your body is gonna to have to overcompensate and that's how you get those overuse injuries. So I'm gonna get into that now. So this is the course I'm pretty much going to be using for most of the session. I'm going to do a little adaptation at the end, but what we're doing is we're going to start at these two red cones here. The next set of red cones, another gate, is 10 steps out. The next one after that is another 10 steps and then another 10 steps. So as you can see, we've got a few gates here. For the first few exercises, we're just going to be working in between this red gate and the first red gate on from that one. So all we're going to be doing to start with, just working on a little bit of lateral bounds. We're going to hop to the side. Pause for a second, get our balance, then we're going to explode off this leg 
and just sprint through the first gate there. So we're just warming up still. We're gonna do two on our right leg, two on our left. And for all of these exercises, we're gonna try and get a balance on both sides because most of us are dominant on one side, it's natural, but we really wanna develop balance on both sides. If we can get both sides as strong as each other equally, we're gonna be more efficient with our movements and we're gonna be a lot faster. Then once we've completed the lateral bounds, we're gonna use this gate here as well. So as you can see, I've placed these two cones probably about six feet or so, three or four steps just behind the starting gate. And we're gonna go into side shuffles. So we're gonna start at this gate, shuffle to the blue gate, and then accelerate out. And we're gonna do four reps in total. We're gonna to go two going this way, and then two facing this way, so we're getting a balance on both sides. Then with each of the individual reps, we're gonna do one with our momentum going against us, so that I have to work against my body. And then the next one, we're gonna start at this blue gate, and then we're working with our momentum. Then once we've done the side shuffle, we're gonna go into a back pedal. So the first two, we're gonna start the red cones, back pedal as fast as we can to the line, so our balance is going this way, so we have to work against it. Then we're gonna accelerate forwards through the two red cones. And then the next two, we're gonna start at the blue, back pedal to the red, and then we're gonna turn and sprint. And then lastly, for this particular exercise, we're gonna work on our turns. So we're gonna accelerate from the red to the blue. Once we hit that line, we're gonna turn and accelerate through the two red cones. So we're gonna do four repetitions. We want two turning to our left, and then we want two turning to our right. That's gonna be the first exercise. I'm just gonna get a sip of water and then we'll get right into it. So that's the first set of exercises. I'm just gonna get about a two minute rest. <laughs> Can't even talk. Two minute rest here, get some water on board. I'll show you what we're gonna do for the next exercise. So I'm not sure if I said before the first exercise, but your rest between each rep is just a jog back. So we're still staying on the move, but we're trying to get that oxygen back. So we're taking it down a lot, going from a 100% intensity to probably like 30, 40%. So a really slow jog back. With these sprints, you're not getting a chance to take in oxygen. And when your body doesn't have oxygen, that's where you build up lactic acid. So you need that recovery to flush out some of it. So going into the next exercise here, we're gonna be starting at this first red gate. So it's a stationary position to start. So we're not on the move, we're not adding any momentum. It's just from a stopped position, working on our acceleration. What we're gonna do, we're gonna get increasingly longer with our distance with each rep. So we start here, we sprint through the first gate, we jog back, we sprint through the second gate, we jog back, and then we sprint through the third gate. So as you might have noticed with these first few exercises, working solely on acceleration, it's those really short steps, really fast arm movements, just trying to claw that ground away. Now we're opening up a little bit. So our technique for top speed is a lot different than our technique for acceleration. With acceleration, it's a lot of short steps, but as we open out, we want to increase that stride length. That's why we're getting our knees up, driving our arms even more, and there's a bigger distance between each of our strides when we're at that final gate. So working on some different speed types here, acceleration, it's a slightly further acceleration, starting to get to top speed. But when you're going through that final gate, the third one, that's where you should be reaching your top speed through the end of it. So what we're gonna do is go once through, going from short to longer to longer. 
Then we're gonna do another repetition, start and go through the longest gate first, jog back, second gate, jog back, and finishing through this nearest one here. So two repetitions in total, let's get into it. Rest here for a minute, then we're gonna do the reverse. that one done rest here for another minute or two we've got one more of these to go so this is the last exercise without the ball so all I've done is added two extra cones in here so we're still starting at the red this time we're going to accelerate out 45 degrees we're going to get around this cone here around through this gate and then for the first two reps we're going to accelerate just to that next gate here so we're going to go one rep coming out to this side one rep going out to the other side accelerating through that third gate. Then we're gonna do two more reps, same thing, one going out to this side, one going out to that side, but accelerating all the way through that final gate. So we should get up to top speed by then, so really lengthen that stride out. But all we're working on here is approaching and accelerating from a 45 degree angle. We've worked on a lot of different angles here, sideways, backwards, forwards. Now we're adding that 45 degree. Two going to this way, two going to that way, and then adding an extra distance with the final two reps. So let's go. So I'm just gonna get my oxygen back. As you can tell, I don't have much in me right now. And I'm gonna set up one last drill, this time involving the ball. I'm just gonna do three reps of it because I'm exhausted, but it's good to get on the ball just a little bit to test your technique, even when you're fatigued. So this is the final drill. This is definitely gonna be a tough one. So what we're doing is we're starting at this gate here. I'm working around the 18 yard box. So this is where the 18 yard meets the goal line. Starting at this gate without the ball, acceleration. Get on the ball, get around that cone. We're cutting inside and just shooting. All I'm aiming for is the target. So at this point, my legs are gonna be very heavy. So just trying to stay disciplined, hit the target. After I've shot, sprint up to that cone, around the cone with the ball, dribble through these cones, finish. Just gonna guide the ball into the net, probably use the inside of my foot for this one. Once I've finished the ball, sprint out to this ball over here, take a touch forward, then I'm gonna cut the ball back so I can do a Cruyff turn, outside foot turn i'm going to get it on my left once again just finish into the net just trying to aim for the target and once i've finished it i've got to sprint around that cone all the way back to the goal line where there's another gate and that's the end of the drill we're going to do three repetitions of this just going to get ready here we'll get into the first rep
All right, guys, really good session there. Legs are absolutely burning now, really hard work there. So make sure you give the session a go, take those drills away. But one important thing you need to be doing after these kind of sessions, whether it's sprint training, plyometric training, weightlifting, you need to make sure you're taking care of your recovery because it's in the recovery phase where those improvements are kind of installed into the body. So in these types of sessions, when you're putting your muscles under a lot of tension, a lot of stress, they get micro tears in them. And that's why a couple days after you feel quite sore, a little bit stiff, it's these micro tears that need to be repaired and that comes in the recovery phase. So when they repair those muscle fibers, they come back even stronger and that's why you get more explosive, stronger, your muscles grow. So you need to take care of your recovery as soon as possible, whether that's hydration, nutrition, stretching, foam rolling, all of that stuff. Take care of it as soon after the session as you possibly can. Then you're gonna bounce back quicker and you can continue training at a very high level even one or two days after a really intense session. So tell me with my recovery, I'm gonna be using one of these massage guns that I got recently. And basically what it provides is a sports massage but in a convenient way. So if you go for sports massages at all, you'll know that they're very expensive. I do them during the season. I take the time to invest in my recovery because I know it's really important. But during the off season, a perfect alternative to getting a sports massage is using one of these percussion massage guns. So what they do, they vibrate really quickly and they provide that massage effect on the muscles. So as you can see here, this is a Nakut Mini and it's a really small compact size, but just because it's small does not mean it lacks any power. It's very powerful indeed. It has four speed settings. So to start it up, you just hold the button on top, then you press it once to get on the lowest setting, then it has four settings. So that's the lowest, second highest, third highest, and then the most intense. This is the one I like to use. Really gives a good stimulation of the muscle, but there's so many good benefits to using these massage guns. One is it increases circulation, so you're getting fresh blood into those muscles, clearing out all those toxins, that waste products that you build up during your intense activities, so it can start to accelerate that recovery process. Another benefit is it can break down scar tissue. So if you ever get an injury, your muscles build up really fibrous tissue on top of that to repair the muscle and give it some protection. But the problem is with the scar tissue, it's not very elastic and it can actually limit your range of movement, which can cause other problems in the body. So you really wanna break that down so you can get back to doing what you can do best at your full capacity. So the Nakut comes with four different heads that you can just easily remove and they're interchangeable. So it comes with the flat head. This is just for a good all over body stimulation and massage. So that's a great way to get those large muscle groups. So just an overall relaxation, really good to do last thing at night. I like to do it just before I go to sleep because it really relaxes the body and helps me get into a deep sleep. It also comes with this round head. It does a similar function to the flat head, but it's just a little bit softer. So it's made out of foam instead of this hard plastic. So it's just a little bit more forgiving on the body. It also comes with a spinal head. So as you can see, there's a gap in the middle and these two sides go either side of your spine. You never want to be massaging directly on the bone itself. And then my personal favorite is the bullet head. So this provides a really intense stimulation. If you've got any particularly sore areas, you're going to get a very localized massage right in that area. So if I feel a really sore spot, I can dig this bullet head right into that area. And it's just going to give a really good massage, break down that scar tissue and get good circulation calculation to start the healing and aid my recovery. So you can control the speed to your liking, you can make it more intense, less intense, and with the interchangeable heads, you can really get a customized massage based on your needs. If you have a lot of painful areas that you really need to dig in deep with the bullet head, or if you just want an overall body relaxation, you can use one of these flat heads as well. And the great thing about the Nakot Mini, it's a very compact size, very easy to carry around. I can just put it in my football bag and it holds a charge for up to 16 hours of running time. So if I use it for 10 minutes a day, I wouldn't even need to charge it for weeks or even months. But it's such a really good device, I would recommend looking into massage guns if you wanna be able to get that sports massage effect very conveniently. It's gonna help you recover quicker so you can train harder and more frequently, and that's just gonna help you improve faster as well. So I really would recommend the NACA. I'm gonna put a link in the description box below if you wanna pick one of these up for yourself. or will take you over to their website where you can go ahead and get the NACOP Mini. So there we go guys, really good session today. Let me know if you have any questions about today's sessions, I'll try and answer them for you. I really hope you enjoyed today's session. If you did, make sure you smash the like button, hit the subscribe button for weekly training videos, and I will see you guys in my next video.